Hello, I'm Ron Soyland. Um, today we're going to examine the equipment that is necessary to construct vacuum tubes in an amateur setting. Uh, this, all of this equipment is um, for strictly amateur use. It is not commercial in any way. Uh, most of the equipment was built by myself uh, from parts off of eBay, things like that. Let's first examine the uh, equipment used to blow the glass. This is the glass blowing station. We have all the equipment necessary to work with glass built into one uh, console. Um, the major equipment that we use will be um, the glass lathe. Now this unit has two chucks on it. They rotate in synchronism. This makes it where you can place parts of the tube into the two pieces of, of the into the two chucks of the uh, lathe, and you can move the uh, chucks together by using controls, and they stay aligned. The parts stay perfectly in alignment when you're working. This is absolutely an essential part of making the uh, tube. Uh, it would be almost impossible to make a tube without having a glass lathe. Now this one was home built completely from parts. So. Uh, from eBay and, and um, uh, uh, the bearings had to be purchased new. They were very expensive, but you can find them on eBay if you keep your eyes open. Um, you will, of course, need access to a metal lathe to do this. Now, to work with the glass, we also need torches. A uh, bench torch is not used in tube making. Um, there are some people who try to do it with bench torches, but they cannot succeed. Uh, you need hand torches. Um, this is the small torch here. It has a uh, interchangeable tip. Um, this is homemade. Um, a, a piece of uh, bar stock was cut and then uh, small valves that are available at uh, the hardware store were used to make the valves for it. Um, the tips for this particular torch are very small. This, this tip here will produce a flame that is approximately an eighth inch in diameter. It's an oxygen gas flame which is extremely hot. Um, this makes uh, a perfect flame for sealing the joints on the tube. For larger work, we have a commercial torch. Uh, this is a national torch that is available commercially. It's about $100, uh, a little over $100 to buy one brand new. You can find them on eBay for about $75 if you keep your eyes open. Uh, the catch to it is that this is an air gas torch. It's not really designed for oxygen. It will work with oxygen, but the uh, difference between an air gas and an oxygen torch has to do with the size of the orifices in the valves. Uh, the air gas torch has larger orifices, so when you get to smaller tip sizes, the valves are very touchy to adjust. I mean, you can do it, but it might take only a sixteenth of a turn to go from full blast to off. Uh, with a small tip on this torch. Whereas on the small torch here, these particular valves were adjusted so that for a small tip, you get about a half a turn on the valve to go from zero to full blast. So you can adjust the flame size very easily. Now, you could remove the valves from the uh, national torch and grind them down to make them a lot more taper on them uh, to get a finer adjustment. Uh, this, this could be done, and I might try doing it on one sooner or later, but um, it really isn't that necessary because you can just have two torches. You can find jeweler torches on eBay for about $150 that have fine adjustments and they have small tips available. Now, for this torch, we have this is a dual uh, a dual jet torch here. It, it has a posing flame so that you can um, place a piece of uh, glass in the middle and heat it from both sides. Okay, that's necessary when you're doing the pinches that uh, pinch the electrodes into the glass. Uh, we also have a large tip. Um, this one here has got multiple holes. You can see here in the end, um, it has uh, 16 inch diameter holes, and this will produce a tremendous blast that's capable of working 2 inch diameter Pyrex tubing. We have a similar tip, which is smaller. It has multiple holes, but these are uh, holes that are twenty thousandths of an inch or half millimeter diameter holes and it will produce a medium flame. It's good for general purpose um, working of the glass where you don't need a tremendous flame. Now to work the glass itself we will use tools that um, are made either of carbon or stainless steel. 
uh, steel is not used very much because uh, molten glass tends to stick to steel. Um, however, there are certain shapes that you can't make out of carbon because it would be too fragile. But most of the tools uh, that we will use are carbon. Um, this is simply a, a piece of carbon that came out of a, uh, an old dry cell. And it was just ground to make a point on it. And this is used for making flares. We use little small pointed pieces. Uh, this one here was made out of a piece of carbon that came out of a flashlight battery. Um, and it uh, is used just for any kind of general purpose work uh, in uh, spreading glass and manipulating, pinching, pushing, and that sort of thing. Now for making pinches, we use these clamps. These are called mashers by the glass blowers. And um, all it is is a flat blade that um, you can just grab the glass and squish down on it. Uh, these were made out of uh, uh, vegetable tongs that can be p purchased at the, gr the grocery store for you know, a few dollars. Um, I made two different sizes. That's the small one, and this is the large one here. It has a, a couple of uh, large plates of uh, uh, tin on there. These are about an inch by three quarter. And it's used for mashing uh, larger pieces. Um, they're just silver soldered onto the, uh, onto the tongs. Now for holding the glass, we have Teflon uh, uh, pieces that uh, have a uh, cut in them. This makes it where you can slip a piece of glass tubing in there. As when, when you uh, look at the chuck here on the lathe, uh, when you adjust this way down for very small tubing, it becomes real touchy to adjust. So by having these, um, these pieces, we can go ahead and leave the, the uh, chuck set to about one inch diameter, and it makes it where we can uh, clamp a piece of small tubing very quickly and easily. Now sometimes we have to build up pressure inside of the tubing in order to uh, blow like a bubble or, or uh, just t keep a piece from collapsing. Now what we do there is we use a rubber plug which will plug into the glass and we have a ball bearing that's in a, a fitting here and we use what's called a shielded ball bearing. It has uh, metal shields on the side of the bearing that uh, block off the flow of air through it. So you can get the, the rotation um, and yet the air is blocked off. The air can go through the center, but it, it's stopped from uh, leaking out through the sides by the shields of the ball bearings. These are available at any, um, any bearing supply or on eBay. You get them on eBay for a few, you know, under a dollar a piece. Uh, we just use a piece of, uh, a piece of uh, surgical tubing to uh, use for a mouthpiece to blow. Now to hold uh, flares, we have a flare uh, clamp. Uh, this will fit into the uh, chuck of the lathe, and uh, the, it, it just has a couple little, uh, let's see if I can zoom in real close here, it has a couple of uh, uh, notches cut in it, and it will go ahead and grab a flare. Um, I don't have a tripod set up, so I can't show it right now, but when we do the glass blowing, I'll show it more. Okay, for holding wires, we have a similar uh, Piece. We have the, the thick part for clamping in the, in the uh, chuck, and we just have a little piece of uh, uh, flat metal in there that's uh, clamped with a clamp, and we can take and hold wires with that, and, and that just uh, fits into the lathe, and then that uh, holds our wires for when we're making the pinches. Now, we have to have a source of gas and oxygen for the torch. Now, I've gone ahead and rigged up a manifold here. Um, it's nice to be able to leave your torches adjusted so that all you have to do is just turn the manifold on and the torch is ready to go. You just hit it, light it and go. Uh, that way you don't have to sit there each time you're changing the torches and carefully adjust the tip to get the flame going. To get gas we're using natural gas. Now to, to, uh, to, to pressurize the natural gas we use a small compressor. Now the reason for this is that the gas coming out of the wall is at about three ounces of pressure we need about three pounds of pressure to operate the torch. So we use a small diaphragm compressor to go ahead and compress the gas up to three pounds per square inch. Uh, we use a little small regulator, a uh, bypass regulator, that regulates the pressure to three pounds per square inch. And that's where we get our supply of gas. Now if you don't have gas uh, to your shop, you can use uh, propane uh, barbecue um, tanks. Uh, these are about $40 at the hardware store and cost about 20 bucks to refill. And one tank of it, one refill, will last for literally a month of heavy glass blowing. It, it's, it, it's an awful lot of gas. For oxygen, we have a little bit more of a problem. Now we got plenty of air, oxygen in the air, but how do we get that oxygen out of the air? And to do that, 
we go ahead and use what's known as an oxygen concentrator. Now these machines are a medical machine that is used by emphysema patients, cancer patients, anybody who's had um, something that has uh, uh, affected their breathing capacity and they have to breathe pure oxygen. So these machines are available from medical suppliers uh, brand new, they cost a couple thousand dollars, so they're a little bit beyond the price range of uh, most people. However, uh, these machines have a definite lifespan for medical use, and when they come to the end of that lifespan, then they, they scrap the machine. They're no longer usable for medical uh, use, and those machines are available for a couple hundred dollars. And they're still working, and they are... Uh, uh, in, in good enough condition to where um, you'll be able to get 90% oxygen out of them. I mean, some of them will be so worn that they might only produce 60% oxygen. Well, those aren't worth having. Um, but it, usually the uh, suppliers will have enough machines on hand where they can find one for you that will have 90 or better percent oxygen out and still have enough hours on it to uh, be useful for your glass blowing. Now, I've got two oxygen concentrators here. You can get by with one. All you really need is one 5 liter per minute machine and you can make almost all of the tubes that you're going to make. However, if you're going to make tubes that have larger envelopes, ones that are like two inches in diameter envelopes, then you're going to need a torch that's large enough to, op to, to, uh, to, to go ahead and blow that large glass. And that's going to take two oxygen concentrators because you're going to need about 15 uh, liters per minute flow through that large torch tip. Now each of these concentrators is rated at 5 liters per minute for their rated output. That's at 5 pounds per square inch. You can get more out of them by opening it up. The pressure will drop a little bit, but you'll still get over 90% pure and you'll get about 7.5 liters per minute. So with two concentrators you can count on getting 15 liters per minute which is enough to operate the largest torches. This is the vacuum system. This is all home built, um, built from scratch from parts off of eBay. Uh, the total invo cost involved was zero dollars because uh, what I did was I built two of them and sold one of them and got enough money to go ahead and um, pay for all the parts on both of them. Now, we have two pumps that are necessary to produce this extreme vacuum that's necessary. First, we have the mechanical pump. This particular mechanical pump is a three-stage rotary pump. Uh, they only made three-stage pumps one year. Uh, Welsh Scientific made them. And um, you don't really need a three-stage pump. A two-stage pump, good two-stage pump, will do just fine. Uh, I just happened to pick up two three-stage pumps for a few dollars each, rebuilt them, and uh, had really nice pumps. But you can use two-stage pumps just fine. They should be a good quality vacuum pump, though, not a refrigeration service pump. To produce the vacuum, we have the diffusion pump. This is a two-inch diffusion pump, and actually two-and-a-half-inch diffusion pump, air-cooled. Um, if you get an air-cooled pump, that means that you don't have to have water connections. That really makes a difference when you're in an area where you don't have any water tap nearby, like my shop. Okay, this pump will <clears throat> uh, take the pressure from about uh, one tor down to 10 to the minus sixth tor. Um, we normally only pump to about 10 to the minus fifth tor uh, when using vacuum tube work because the getter will go ahead and take the rest of the air out without any problem. <clears throat> okay, uh, this will be the uh, parting point of this uh, video. Uh, due to the 15 minute li limit, I have to go ahead and chop it here. Uh, go to part two, click on part two in my uh, video list to continue this video.